All right, I'm just gonna get started because then I get an extra minute or two. Uh, so, yeah, we're gonna be talking about eBPF uh, for observability and I'm gonna be, I'm aiming to show how it, um, Inspector Gadget makes it easy and approachable. I'm Chris Cool. Uh, I work at Microsoft. How many people have heard of eBPF? Okay, that's a lot of hands. How many people have used eBPF? Now, have you used eBPF directly or have you used it through a tool like Cilium or something like um, Falco? How many people have used it directly? Okay, yeah, so very few. Um, we aim to change that. We want you to be able to say, oh, I think eBPF can solve that and uh, go straight to um, getting that information you need. So eBPF, we say, have super, has superpowers. Uh, it allows you to tap into the kernel without modifying the kernel. It runs in a sandbox, and so it is guaranteed safe, meaning you cannot crash the kernel. Uh, like uh, previously, you could only get this kind of information through a kernel module, which shared the memory, um, so it was unsafe. It's high performance and very efficient. It runs in the kernel. Um, it uh, is event driven, so you attach it to a resource in the kernel, and then it, um, when an event happened, it executes, and in our case, it puts that data into a ring buffer, which you can pull out from the other side uh, in user space. It is general purpose, so you hear a lot of uh, networking tools or security tools or observability tools. It can do those things and more, and so Inspector Gadget tries to uh, provide you a way to use the full spectrum of, of BPF for observability. Um, so eBPF is hard. Uh, this is why so few hands went up uh, when I asked uh, who used it directly. Uh, so you have to first write the BPF program. There's your first hurdle. Um, are you, how, many P, how many kernel engineers do we have in here? Very few. <laughs> About the same number as uh, the question I asked before. Um, first you have to write the BPF program. You need that kernel knowledge. Uh, you need to compile it to an ELF, um, to the ELF format. You need to make sure it works across kernels and architectures. Uh, you need to deploy it across your nodes uh, when we're using Kubernetes. We need to load, EB we need to load the eBPF program into the kernel, uh, and then that, that BPF program is there, it puts data in a ring buffer, and then you need to gather that data from user space, uh, and then that data is actually raw kernel data. It doesn't know anything about Kubernetes or containers, and so you're gonna have to do some kind of mapping uh, to these high level resources. Um, you're gonna have to perform any possible post-processing because there are limitations to what you can do in eBPF, for example, string processing if you're working with DNS, uh, for example. Um, you, then you have to prepare that data. And so we're, because we're talking about observability, we wanna prepare it for exporting it to an observability uh, service, so you're gonna need to also send it or make it available uh, to that service. Inspector Gadget does all of those things. Um, its battery is included and Let's talk about what that means. We say Inspector Gadget is a set of tools and a framework for data collection and systems inspection on Kubernetes clusters and Linux hosts using eBPF. Uh, the key features of eBPF, uh, you can, it builds and packages eBPF programs as OCI images, similar to containers. Um, it distributes and manages eBPF programs across your cluster. So if we take those two points, you can say that it's a package manager, kind of similar to Docker, and it's an orchestrator, kind of similar to Kubernetes. Um, you can also do a lot more. You can collect and export data for observability tools uh, with a simple command or a declarative uh, configuration, and we actually use uh, OTEL library for this, um, so to keep the consecutive talks that talk about OTEL uh, alive. Um, we have security mechanisms to restrict and lock down which gadgets can be run. For example, only from this repository, uh, only gadgets that are signed, um, um, signed by this sign um, key. Um, we offer automatic enrichment, so that mapping of low level to high level, uh, that's done automatically inside of Inspector Gadget. And for doing post-processing, we have a WebAssembly modules that you can include, and you can choose which um, you know, supported WebAssembly language you want to use there and it supports many modes of operations. From the CLI, you can uh, use it interactively on the, on the, you know, interactively on the terminal, or you can start it headless, and this is kind of the state we use when we want to send it to metrics. Um, we have client surfer architecture, so you can log into a remote instance. Um, you can use it inside your program via API, um, or you can actually embed it using a Go, Go library. So you can embed it all, that, all that functionality into a Go library and use it inside your application. So the tools that we have inside of Inspector Gadget, uh, we call those gadgets, um, and gadgets are OCI images, and they contain eBPF programs. But the gadgets are more than eBPF program, 
programs. Uh, they include metadata, which describes the capabilities and functionality um, that, so that the framework knows uh, what to expect and what, to, um, what, what um, it can do. Um, it provides us optional WASM modules for any post-processing you may need. And then this BTF gen, that takes care of that, um, making sure it's portable to different kernels and different architectures. And so there's off-the-shelf gadgets. You can choose from almost 30 that we have, um, or if something's missing, file a PR. Or you can build your own, and you can maintain these outside the projects, or you could send it to a BBR, of course. Um, and you can really leverage the power of the framework uh, so you don't have to do all the boilerplate stuff. You can fo focus on the functionality that you need. Um, and like containers, you can share this. They're just um, OCI images. So we share them on Artifact Hub, and we have about 30 here, like I mentioned. And so let's talk about some of these and some of the scenarios you might use these in. Uh, let's say you want to um, see when a shell is open on your, on your, um, in your uh, cluster and you want to see, um, you want to alert that in you know, Prometheus Alert Manager. So you can use the trace exec, you can filter on bash, and you can feed that into Prometheus, those events that happen, and then you can have an alert manager, manager uh, set up to, to give you an alert for that. We gave a demo of that yesterday at um, Cloud Native Rejects. You want to see what your DNS requests and responses are. You can use trace DNS for that. Or let's say we want to see what the latency of our network is, and we want to have a really nice uh, heat map in Grafana for that. Well, you can use the TCP round trip, uh, round trip time gadget, and that'll give you basically a histogram on the terminal, but it'll also send the metrics to Prometheus, and you can uh, view those in, in Grafana as a heat map. Now, let's see if we find some latency issues. Well, we can go to the trace uh, uh, TCP drop gadget, and we can see um, which packets are being dropped and for what reasons they're being dropped. Or maybe we just want to see the retransmissions. Uh, we can do that with trace TCP retrans. Or maybe we want to see what the block I.O. latency is. You can go to the profile block I.O. You can, similar to that, um, the round trip uh, TCP one, uh, you can go to histogram or send that to Prometheus, um, graph it in Grafana. And uh, let's say if you want to see which files are being opened, maybe you want to filter on, um, on um, the opening of a password file or something like that. Uh, you can use trace open for that. You can make an alert in alert manager for it. So those are just some of the tools. We have a lot more. So what we're saying is if you want to use eBPF for observability, take a look at Inspector Gadget. We think it pretty much serves most purposes um, you could use, uh, you can need. Um, it's actually used in Kubescape. If you use that security tool, the RMO folks um, use it underneath. We also use it internally in Microsoft in the um, Defender for Cloud, um, one of those uh, sub-projects. Um, yeah, and thanks. And uh, we will be... Uh, at the Project Pavilion all day tomorrow. And on Thursday, we have a um, contrib fest. So if you're interested in getting really more and digging in a little more, uh, then please come see us there. Otherwise, we're on Slack. So thank you.